Property Tribes on location at the Landlord Investment Show in London. I'm joined by Peter from iHouse. And Peter, I'm sure you'd love to join me in wishing the Hanbury's a very happy 10th anniversary of the Landlord Investment Show. And I believe I'm right in saying this is their 80th live show, which I think is such an amazing it is, achievement, yeah, isn't it? Is. it? Yeah, well, we went to the original one in Croydon. Yes, 10 years, years ago, ago. Yes. And just couldn't believe it's going to grow like this, where you took all your own stuff with you. <laughs> you might have got a table if you're lucky. But now look at it. You know, real proper show now, isn't it? So, oh no, well done to them. Indeed. And it's so necessary as well to keep people informed of what's going on, quite honestly. So, you know, if you're not starting off now, it's difficult keeping up to date. You're right. And that's why you need someone like a Landlord Association, your good selves. Thank you, and your good selves, of yeah. course, because Peter, you've done a lot of commentary recently on the Renters' Reform Bill. Yep. I know you're very concerned about MEES as well, the energy efficiency standards. Um, and, you know, there's so much landlord pain around at the moment, isn't yep. there? Yep. And a lot of the panel debates here at the show have been addressing those pain points. And yep. you've been involved in a panel as well, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, but very much it's a whole a whole plethora of things come together at the same time you know the finance the interest rates etc etc uh but also regulation yeah <laughs> and a lot of it's been the making of the government quite honestly and they just need to concentrate and look at housing as a whole yeah. not just individual bits because no we had no government look at housing as a whole since well since the war mm. quite frankly and then they had to but they need to look at social housing and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. not, not just, oh, we're going to build more houses. That'll solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Will it? I don't know if it will. So, well, you know. No, clearly not. Uh, and, and it, you know, there's the whole of our sector is so fragmented as yep. well. You know, central government has a, an agenda. Local government is struggling uh, with that agenda. As we know, yep. there we've got lots of local authorities yep. uh, crying out for landlords. And indeed, you mentioned the very first crack, uh, show LIS ran at Croydon. Uh, I went to that. Oh, did and, you? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, I was very interested to see that there were local authorities from other areas of the yep. UK who had come there looking yep. uh, looking for landlords. Yep. Um, and that was 10 years ago. So the problems only got worse since yep. then. Yep. Um, and you know there it's it's interesting you um uh, we were just chatting before the camera turned on you mentioned and i agree with you that the, the noise around the renters reform bill has actually dropped away mm. um are, are we going to see it this in, in the imminent future well this is a pure guess <laughs> <laughs> uh, parliament goes into recess at 20th what's today the fourth isn't it so yeah. i can't see them getting a second reading be before the 20th mm -hmm. They're due back, I think, mid-September, but after a week and a half, they're supposed to go to conference. Mm -hmm. They're back from conference October. Personally, I think they're going to struggle to get a second reading in before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that goes on forever. It goes to committee, etc., etc. It's all a long, drawn-out process. We've got a general election sometime. A general election, a new parliament, who, whatever colour it is, kills all bills. Mm -hmm. They have to start all bills again. And, you know, the Labour Party, personally, I would have thought, aren't going to make it their priority. It could well be year two or three before they pick it up again. Mm. So we don't know. We really don't know. Mm. We, my view about the Dimensions Reform Bill is, in general, it's not as bad as people are making out. Mm. The problems that we've got are controlling antisocial behaviour. Mm. They've tried to amend um, Section 8. They've made some amendments, mm. not enough. Um, they're getting rid of Section 21, which is principally used for uh, antisocial behaviour. And the other thing is about losing fixed-term tenancies mm -hmm. and how that's going to uh, affect particularly student landlords. Mm -hmm. I was talking to John Blackwood in um, Scotland. Mm -hmm. It's that part that's driven the coach and horses through mm -hmm. the Scottish system. Mm -hmm. Not the Section 21 so much, mm -hmm. but it's just decimated the student landlords mm -hmm. because they've got no... Uh, continuity, mm -hmm. they don't know what's going on, and so they're making up as they go along. Mm -hmm. There's just no thought about it at all. Well, there's so many, uh, you know, it's a bit like they tweak one lever here yeah. and then it has an impact over there that they didn't foresee. And, no, I agree. You know, well, there's all sorts of problems arising through some of this new regulation and legislation, but I think the key thing you mentioned just now is the words don't know. Yes. And 
that causes problems for landlords because it creates uncertainty. So we, we don't really know where we stand with a lot of issues, particularly with energy efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's been put back to 2028 now. Uh, and, you know, landlords need to feel confident about regaining possession of their properties. Yeah knowing what their expenditure is going to be over the coming years, yep. that kind of thing. And that everything the government does just seems to put us in a position where we can't feel confident. And it's not only existing landlords, it's new landlords yeah. coming to the sector or sitting on the fence thinking, well, you know, is it a good time to invest? So I can only see that rents are going to continue to rise yep. uh, and there's going to be a huge, huge uh, tenant demand As continuing. you say, the big word is the uncertainty thing. And, you know, in answer to a question we often get asked, is it worth being a landlord? If you are a landlord, yes, as long as you're professional and know what you're doing and keep a good eye on things, be very careful about the kind of tenant you offer to, mm -hmm. keep a good eye on the property, keep a good eye on the, the tenancy, etc. Is it worth if you're young and you want to buy into it? I don't know. I don't know. You need an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're overgeared, it just you know so many people so well we you know we used to interest rates of point something mm. well i remember interest rates of 15 percent mm. and people survived mm. so it's not the money so much it's the uncertainty about the energy mm -hmm. about the renters reform bill mm -hmm. about things such as fixed term etc etc yeah. so much uncertainty out there at the moment well i think that brings us full circle back to how important events like this are and yep. You know how important landlord education is yeah. because I think the risks have definitely been yeah. amplified. Yeah. Uh, landlords have really got to raise their game in, in yeah. order to survive. Um, and it is going to be interesting. I don't know how many newcomer landlords are here, but uh, you know, we do need new landlords coming into the sector. We need old landlords, the existing landlords, to, to stay as well yeah. because you know there is going to be massive tenant demand and it's always good to be in a sector where there's huge demand for something yep. so we've got to yep. focus on that positive as well and we want them to know what they're doing with a different hat on i'm also chair of london landlord accreditation scheme personally and i would say this i think all landlords should be trained and accredited mm. before they're allowed to to take on yeah. uh, people's homes yeah, yeah. that's what they are and so many times you come to this kind of show and how many times do you talk to people who think you don't really know what you're talking about mm. so you know that's not a good thing mm. really not a good thing so you know be professional join a landlord association get trained etc exactly i think education is so important yep. going forwards yep. uh, and it's really i think going to be the the educated landlord that that will survive yep. this um we're very much saying to landlords We've, we kind of work with Graham Rowan and he came up with this phrase, sovereign landlord. Right. Be a landlord that controls all the things that you can control. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. we can't control which government is in, what their yeah. policies are, what inflation is doing, what taxation is doing. We can control aspects of our business, such as which financial product we have, which yeah. tenant we left into our property, how we manage that property. Yeah. Landlords have got the, to take control. The standard control. of your property, yeah. the gearing of your property yeah. or the gearing of your portfolio. No, I completely agree with you. Excellent. Completely agree with you. you know, just know what you're doing. Yes. And do it correctly. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining me here no, no, at Property thank you. Drives. Thank you to Peter from iHouse. Um, and stay tuned. We may have more from this show. Uh, we're going to have a look around and see who else we can talk to and get some insights from. But for now, thank you for, thank Peter you. for talking to me. Okay.